St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy for the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. On this day, we come in joy to thank the Lord for his merciful love. The liturgy is being offered for the happy soul, repose of the soul of Hugo Hapkajesi, Josephine Manos, Laboria Malone, and also for the people of the parish. We begin our prayer by joining in singing, We Walk by Faith. Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Awe ah, came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though you don't see him now, 
yet believing him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trust 
what our own eyes see before we trust the word of another. And I'm sure you've known in ages past or heard in ages past of explorers that have gone to far off lands and then have come to their home and tell people all sorts of stories about you know, the creatures and the lands and the natural wonders and the food and the peoples that were there and you know, how they were so different and so incredible. And some people who could be very skeptical would say, you've got to be making all of this up. What you're saying is not possible. But if you think for a moment, isn't the opposite true at times? How many people dismiss scientific evidence and replace it with the way that they think the way things are or hope they would be in their own minds? You know, think about how many people a long, long, long time ago would still have argued that the world was flat, even though they could have scientifically proved that it is round. You know, and other people would believe the most convoluted, outrageous conspiracies and other types of stories than hearing the clearest, most logical explanations, like the person were, was kidnapped from aliens from outer space, something else like that, or how many people will come and they'll bring home their date to their family, you know, the date who had been married five times before that doesn't have a job that they can hold on to, or maybe you've just got out of prison and is 30 years older than your daughter already, and just the daughter saying, isn't he wonderful, and you just make some objections, but you just don't see him the way that I see him. You're not seeing the real him. In other words, sometimes believing without seeing is actually somewhat easier than accepting what we should or would see with our own eyes. Might be that way too with matters of faith. And I guess it depends on what you mean by believe. All of us may say we believe, and I guess that's a logical starting point. And whether we use words that word as a declaration or as a wish, or as a hope, or as an effort of convincing ourselves. If we say I believe, it really doesn't matter. Embracing the idea of belief, or the possibility of belief, heads us in the right direction. It starts us on the path of faith. And yet, in many respects, that's the easiest step, because it demands very little of us. Virtually all who come to church would respond to the question, do you believe in God? Well, absolutely, emphatically, yes, I believe in God. Even though we are aware, well aware, that no two of us probably mean the exact same thing by that yes. And so it's really not that hard to say those words or to call ourselves believers. But it's more than that, right? For us Christians, it means that we are asked to accept some pretty amazing things. And that the foundation of all of these things is faith in a person, the person of Jesus Christ, who is no ordinary person. Jesus is God himself. And this Jesus walked among us and showed us how to love and how to live. And in the process, he lost his life. He gave his life for our sake and for the salvation of the world. And yet, and if that wasn't enough, he destroyed even death itself. So Christian belief entails accepting and taking to heart all these incredible things. But it's even more than that, right? What is the point of believing if it doesn't change us in this inside, if it doesn't actually shape how we live or love or how we treat one another. What is the point of believing if we reduce it to just words or ideas that rattle around in our head? In other words, the depth of our belief is reflected in the depth of our love. Think about that for a moment. The depth of our belief is reflected in the depth of our love. There, that's the only true evidence. If love is entirely or nearly absent, and I mean by love selfless and unconditional love, 
If that is absent, then maybe authentic belief and true faith are absent as well. And so maybe believing without seeing isn't that hard. If what we mean by belief is simply saying the words or agreeing with a few ideas. But if our words match our commitment, if our words match the love that we have for Jesus, if our words reflect the truth surrendering, surrendering to God who loves us beyond all understanding, then maybe we are on to something. Maybe we are more true to what Jesus means by being blessed, more in the spirit of Thomas who cried out with his whole being, my Lord and my God. I wonder if any of us wish that Jesus would come and stand right here in our midst as well. And I think maybe we should be careful for what we wish for because I'm convinced that many of us, myself included, might not be able to accept him for who he is on first sight. We might even be able to reject him or wish that he would go away. You know, I'm guessing we find him maybe a little too kind, a little too compassionate, a little too loving, a little too forgiving, too understanding, too accepting. And so we tend to like the story of Thomas for the wrong reasons, for the wrong conclusions, presuming that we would never be like him. But the truth is that Jesus doesn't have a problem with Thomas. He understands the difficulties in his belief. And he understands our own spiritual journeys, journeys that often involve wonder as well as doubt and confusion and resistance to fully accepting all that Jesus offers us. Jesus gets all of that, and he loves us anyway. And so let's accept the challenges that come with trying to believe. Challenges we see both in others as well as in ourselves. And pray to take our belief, however solid or shaky it may be, and turn it into action. This weekend provides us with the perfect opportunity to open our hearts and ask Jesus to help our unbelief by recognizing the depths of his love for us and trusting in his divine mercy. 20 years ago, Pope St. John Paul II canonized a, pers a Polish nun, Sister Mary Faustina Kowalska, who received from Jesus, through his appearances to her in the 1930s, the amazing revelations of his divine mercy. And he asked her to reproduce that image he presented to her to show the depth of the love of his sacred heart that he has for each of us. And the sacred heart of Jesus has given us everything. It's given us redemption, salvation, sanctification. And coming from this heart was the overflowing love portrayed by those two rays of light which illuminate the world. Those two rays denote the blood and water. The blood recalls the sacrifice of Calvary and the mystery of the Eucharist. And the water recalls baptism and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And through the mystery of this wounded heart, the restorative tides of God's merciful love continue to spread over men and women of our time. Here alone can those who long for true and lasting happiness can find it secret. Jesus, I trust in you. That is the prayer he asks us to pray, to abandon ourselves totally into the hands of our loving Savior. Pray the chaplain of divine mercy today and open your heart totally to receive his love. Jesus, I trust in you. Gracias.
Father before all angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us sent and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was departed from the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified in the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust and divine mercy, we now bring our prayers before the Lord. Our response to each petition will be, Risen Savior, hear our prayer. And so we pray. That the mercy of our risen Savior may draw all sinners to the fountain of repentance, forgiveness, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For those who, like Thomas, do not yet believe, that they may see Jesus through our words and actions of faith and charity. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that the risen Lord will bring an end to the coronavirus and give hope, healing, and new life to those who are sick. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all who work in essential jobs, that God will protect them and their families from illness and give them strength to fulfill their duties. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish and for all families, that our merciful Father may continue to bless us, to keep us, and help us to grow together in love and in faith. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. That all the sick and those who suffer in any way may be consoled and strengthened by God's grace and the care shown by his people. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all who died, especially for Hugo F. Jesse, Joseph Manos, Gloria Alone, and our recently deceased, Sebastian Sonny Murrow, and Anna Testa, that they may come to share in the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that we hold close to our hearts.
Pray that brothers and sisters in my sacrificing the words may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. The Lord accepts the sacrifice of Jacob for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the glory of the church. Accept the Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those who have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain to an end of happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, that all those who acclaim you, but at this time above all, to walk together more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with the of joy. Every land of your people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Savior's commandment to talk about the life teaching we hear it say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, to the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, who graciously granted the peace and unity of forth to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. During the pandemic, when no public masses are celebrated, faithful are unable to receive the Eucharist. In these cases, the church encourages us to make an act of spiritual communion, where we unite ourselves to God through prayer. It is a beautiful way to express to God our desire to be united with Him, when we are unable to complete that union in the reception of Holy Communion. I'll now pray the traditional prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. I believe in the sun. Oh. 
Grant the Almighty God that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go for the masses and the hallelujah. Renewed in faith, we sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. 